thanks for joining. So we are going to talk about event discovery for Kubernetes applications. And I'm Pierangelo. I'm one of the maintainers of Kennedy Eventing. I also maintain one of the Cloud Events SDKs. We saw one talks earlier about Cloud Events. And here's with me, Christoph. Hello from my side as well. My name is Christoph. I'm also a software engineer working at Red Hat in the OpenShift serverless team and also a maintainer of Knative eventing projects. So let's see what we have an agenda for today. First, we talk about event discovery in general. What is it? Why is it helpful? And why you probably want it? Then we show you how event discovery is done with an example of Knative eventing. And as this is a lot of theory, up to then, Pianto will prepare a nice demo where we where we show you how event discovery looks in action. And at the end, we hopefully have some time left for your questions. OK, but before we jump directly into event discovery, let's first give you a quick introduction to Knative eventing, because we're using a lot of terms in the following slides from Knative eventing and from event-driven applications, so that we're simply all on the same page in terms of terminology. Knative eventing in general helps you to build event-driven applications on top of Kubernetes. And it does that by providing you a set of building blocks which solve problems which are pretty common when you design or build event-driven applications. And one of the issues, for example, is how to get events from a third-party system into your event system, or how we call it, into your event mesh. And therefore, Knative Eventing provides you the concept of a source. And a source takes an event from a third-party system, for example, a GitHub event or a Kafka record, wrapping it into a cloud event and emitting this into the system. Cloud event, as Evan said in the previous talk, is a, can be seen as a common specification for describing events in a common way by providing a set of attributes as headers, um, as metadata, and of course the payload of the event. So back to Knative eventing, a source can then be seen as an adapter taking a third-party system event and wrapping it into a cloud event and sending it into a system. Another building block in Knative eventing are brokers and triggers. And those are responsible for routing the events. The broker provides a discoverable endpoint for event ingress, so where events get sent to. And the trigger is then responsible for um, the event delivery. And the nice thing about triggers is that you can apply filtering so that filtering based on certain attributes of the cloud event so that only certain cloud events get forwarded. Another building block in Knative eventing are syncs. And a sync can be simply seen as a way to get um, events out of your event mesh and talk to a third party system. For example, taking a cloud event, talking to, a, to the Slack API by translating the cloud event into a Slack message, for example. But a sync can also be a service in the system which simply accepts events, for example, a Knative function, which does then something with the event. Okay, so three, or the main building blocks, which are in the next slides appear a bit often, um, source, brokers and triggers, and syncs. Okay, but back to event discovery. What is event discovery and why do you want, probably want it? Imagine you have an event mesh in your system, um, and the events come from multiple different sources, from public sources, from example, from a couple of one from Knative eventing, but also events from internal systems or services. And as a developer or as a participant in your event mesh, you might wonder what are the available events which fly through the event mesh, which you can consume, and how do they, how do the events look like? So what's their schema? And for the public sources, you would usually consider the documentation. In this example, the Knative sources documentation, pick your source, but there's no information on this page um, about the available types and their schemas, what this source emits. So what you can do next, we can ask ChatGPT in this case, for example, using hey, or saying, hey, I'm using Knative eventing with Apache Camel, the Camlets, and I need to know the event types and the schemas that I can consume from AWS DynamoDB Dynamo streams in this example. And indeed, ChatGPT is pretty helpful and provides us the information. It provides us a list of event types, 
For example, AWS DynamoDB insert, modify, and remove with short description, and also an example schema. So it's pretty helpful in this case. So back to our example, let's assume that we trust ChatGPT to describe public sources pretty well um, about the required information. But we still have the issue about internal systems, which might not be documented very well and very simple, don't know the, the types of the um, events which gets emitted from the source. So the only way, as of today, to know which types this, these sources emit are is creating a handler which logs the event to the console, sending an event to, to this new handler and checking the, the console and kind of inspecting it and guessing the types and the schema and so on. And this is exactly the, the point where, or the issue what, where event discovery comes into place. It wants, you, it wants to provide you a way um, to provide you all this information upfront so you don't have to use ChatGPT or create fake handlers, read incomplete documentation or anything like that. It wants to provide you a way um, with this information. Okay, let's see how event discovery is done in Knative, for example. The heart of event discovery is the, in Knative eventing is the event type API. And it's a new custom resource which has two, two main fields. First, the reference section, which is a reference to the emitting resource, so who is sending the, um, these event types or these events. And then a list of attributes. And those are the attributes from the cloud events, which this event type specifies. For example, the type, the source, or the data schema, which can be a link. And then, of course, you as a developer can use kubectl, for example, um, to list those event types, or as you see later, backstage, to list the available event types. But you might wonder, okay, how do these, how do these event catalogs or get created or how do they, these event types get created for you? And of course, you can um, manually register them by creating a new custom resource of the event type. For example, as a source owner or a source creator, you could create those event types and ship them with your product so that everybody who uses this source knows directly, okay, my, uh, this source emits events of this type with these attributes and so on and so on. Or in Canadian, you can use the automatic registration feature, which is for example available on brokers, which creates those event types automatically for you. So um, this looks the following way, it's simple. A cloud event gets sent to the broker. The broker inspects the, the CNCF cloud event for you and creates this event type automatically, directly for you. And how this looks in action, um, we'll show you Piangelo now. Okay. So, uh, just a little in overview of like the demo that you're gonna see. Uh, our goal again is to figure out, we, we have a website, just normal website, everybody has one, and is emitting events to a broker and we don't really know what they are. And so we are gonna figure out together what they are, what's their schema, and we're gonna do that through Backstage. And basically, um, Backstage is a developer portal. It lets you document and also scaffold your applications pretty quickly, and we're gonna do that. Uh, so we're gonna create a GitHub repo. We are gonna implement the logic. In our case, we're gonna basically our goal is to, whenever there is a new order on the website, we're gonna send an email to the website owner. Um, and so that's the logic of our function, is to send the email. Um, and basically, at the end, also subscribe to the broker so that basically the connection actually happens. So that's the overview. Uh, let me switch to... Uh, so this is the website that we have. So simple website. You can kind of imagine what are the events as I click through it. There are some events that are created. I can, I don't know, add or remove icons and I see the summary kind of changing. Uh, and whenever there is an order, uh, there is an in order confirmed, confirmed uh, here, but now nothing is happening. So we're gonna go ahead and basically figure out how we do this email notification sending when there is an order event. Uh, 
happening on the website. So we're gonna get to backstage, and this is like the website for uh, the, the UI for backstage. I'm gonna click on APIs and then select event types in this case. And I can see there, is, there are a few events uh, that are like emitted by the, system, by the system that I have. Um, in this case, as we saw earlier, uh, we are interested in the order event and we see it down here. Uh, hopefully it's visible. Um, and backstage and the plugin that we built helps you also figure out um, if you go down in this uh, graph view, helps you figure out what are the resources and system that is also, that this particular event is provided by. So I can also kind of inspect also what is, what are, event, what are other events that this system is like providing to me. In this case, there are all of them, obviously it's a demo, but this can get very complex in, you know, real life uh, situations. Uh, and this graph view is very handy to know what's the impact also of changing the shape of an event to those stream consumers. So I'm gonna go back and click on order again. And Backstage also helps with basically connecting to other systems if you have, I don't know, external documentations. In this case, the plugin is uh, connecting to basically to also dig deeper into the schema of the event. What, what is the fields that this event is uh, providing to me. So if I click on that link, I'm gonna do that to, in this case, I'm using API Curio. You can use whatever schema registry you want. Um, um, uh, pretty much works. It's just an HTTP link at the end of the day. And I'm gonna click on content and basically understand that, you know, this is the order event and I have a few properties. Uh, in this case, it's a JSON schema but you can use pretty much every other format like Avro, Protobuf, or whatever else. Uh, in this case, I have an order ID, I have a customer details for this order. I, can, uh, uh, I know that there is, these are required fields and also there is the list of items and so on and so forth, also payment details. So now that I have you know, these informations up front, I can go ahead and kind of create my function um, to send the email. So I'm gonna go back to Backstage and click on Create. Uh, as I said earlier, Backstage helps you with scaffolding also applications. So um, in this case, I have a few templates. I'm gonna, I don't know, I like, I don't really like Node, but I'm gonna select Node because, you know, everybody's kind of familiar with it. Uh, in this case, there are like two node uh, templates. Uh, there is one cloud events one and this one is uh, raw HTTP. In this case, we are gonna handle events. So I'm gonna choose uh, cloud events one. I'm gonna choose this one. I'm gonna fill in the details. In this case, organization name is my GitHub organization. These templates are pretty much customizable for like depending on what you are using and what kind of um, Git repo you use. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Give it the name, repository name, description, um, then give it an owner and a system and then review it and this looks good to me. I'm gonna click on create and this basically is creating the GitHub repo for me. So I don't, I don't have to manually scaffold that. So I'm gonna click on op open the source code repository. This is normal GitHub and is, the, is a cloud events function. So the main logic of the function usually is in this uh, index.js file. And so in here we are gonna code basically the email sending logic. Obviously we don't have the time to kind of code live. I already done that for, for the sake of demo. I have this uh, other function and oops. And in the index.js file, I've, you know, I've pretty much, that's the scaffolding. And then I have in the index.js file, I have the mail sending logic. I'm sending the email to MailPit, which is an email testing tool. Uh, and then I'm basically using the data field of the cloud event with the fields that we just saw in the schema registry uh, to basically build this email template. Um, and I'm using, you know, the customer name, the order ID that we just saw, and the items as well. 
And then at the end, I'm just sending the email. Hopefully it's big enough to see. Um, so now, now our goal is basically to build this function, deploy it, and see if the email is properly sent. So I'm gonna click on code and just uh, clone URL. I'm gonna add to my build system. In this case, I'm using OpenShift, but like you can use, that's what I get for free. Um, I'm gonna click on add. In this case, I'm gonna just build my function and I'm gonna paste my URL and click on create. And this is basically building my function and deploy it as a Knative function. Knative functions are like uh, fully scalable, so they also scale down to zero when they are not used, so they save some resources for other stuff. Uh, in, this in this case, the build is taking, uh, is, is started, and hopefully it goes well. Um, okay, the build is done, and so um, in my like set, original setup, uh, hopefully, oops, okay, the, the, the function is deployed. I have my UI source, which is connected to the broker, and our next goal is basically connect the broker to the function that I have down here. So I'm gonna click on add and go to the event catalog down here. We are gonna have the same list that we saw in backstage as well, pretty much the same. Uh, click on the, or on the event that we are interested in, click on subscribe, and uh, this is creating a connective trigger, as we saw earlier, it's basically the connection between the broker and the sync function. And just give it the name, select whatever is the function name, and then remove the schema filter because I just want all the events. And then click on subscribe, and this is creating a trigger for me. And we see these connections, this connection between the broker and uh, my function. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to the website and um, just add the icons that I want. In this case, I want the package, the telescope, the chart one. I see all of them and I'm just gonna click on order. And if the demo works, we're gonna get an email in Melpit. Uh, And there you go. We got two, obviously, because I clicked twice, but yeah. This is the, the uh, email, and uh, you know, it's probably formatted, and you know, I've used my uh, fields. So that was pretty much the end of the demo, and uh, yeah, if you, if you have, uh, if you wanna give us feedback for, uh, the talk, you can just uh, scan the QR code, but we are happy to take any questions if there is still time. I think there is, there should be some time. Yeah, we have also a Knative kiosk. We're gonna stay there pretty much the entire conference. So if you can ask, wanna ask questions later. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you.